Hi friends, my name is Akil Ahmed and in this particular video tutorial we will see how to export and split data to multiple excel sheets in SSIS. So the agenda of today's video tutorial is that how can we export data from SQL Server table to an excel file into multiple sheets. So according to the number of records in the table maybe we can divide the data into smaller parts and then we can insert one part into one sheet okay so maybe like if we have 100 records or 1000 records or the table can be very larger for example we have 1 million records okay so we can divide the data into multiple sheets so let's see how we can do that so let's jump to the demo so i have a sql server instance here and in the work database i got several tables so let me show you the data in one of the table so I can write the select query select star from and maybe I can select the data from the email table okay so this particular table it contains 1000 records okay so now what I want to do that I want to split out the data from this particular SQL table into multiple sheets for example if I divide the data into five equal parts then the first 200 records they should be inserted into first sheet okay and after the 200 records okay so till here uh, they will go into the first sheet and then from the 201 to 400 they will go into the sheet 2 and then from you know 401 to 600 they should go into sheet 3 so so this should work like this and I should be able to pass the number dynamically like the value like how many sheets should be created so if I pass the value dynamically like 5 sheets 10 sheets so according to the data should be uh, divided into chunks from the SQL table and it should be inserted to the different sheets okay so for doing this particular thing actually uh, we will be using the C sharp console app initially so first we will test the code inside the C sharp console app because it's easy to understand the code there and then once we will test the code then I will you know move the code to the script task in the SSIS package okay and we will also be using some SQL uh, queries as well so uh, we can use the execute SQL task to execute the SQL queries. So now here to uh, divide the data into smaller parts. Now we have two options. Either we can add a column like part column to this particular table. But I always avoid you know adding the columns to the like the live tables, the tables which are in use. So what we can do, we can create an staging table with only the ID column from this one. So that your table can be very large and we just need an ID column and we will create the part column on the fly and we will use the entire function okay so we can pass the value to the entire function and then accordingly the table will be created so we can write the code here so before creating the table we should check if the table exists or not so we can use this particular query uh, to check if a table exists or not so uh, we can create a staging table with the name temp underscore email underscore staging so if table exists then drop table and table name okay and after that we can create the fresh table so how we can create the table select star from our main table and our main table is the email table okay and now we can uh, use the entire function here entire and then we can pass the number like I want five entiles or you can say like five parts over order by ID and we can call this column as part okay into new table new table name will be temp underscore email staging okay so if I will execute this query then it will create a new table so let me execute these queries okay so there is one thing that we do not need all the columns from the email table instead we just need the ID column okay so let me re-execute the query okay and let me check the data now so if you see here uh, we got the ID column along with the part column okay so the part value should be you know uh, 1 for the first 200 records and then for the next 200 records it should be 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 okay so the table is divided into 5 equal parts here okay now we can just uh, create one sheet for each part okay so now we got the table so after uh, creating the table because we will be joining the staging table with the main table based on a join on ID so probably we should create a cluster index on the ID column okay so let's create the clustered index create clustered index ix underscore ID on staging table so our staging table is this one 
and we can pass the column name okay so we can execute this query and we can also create an index if you want on the part column because uh, we will also use this part column in the where clause so i can uh, create another index create index ix underscore part on and we can pass the index key as part okay so here we created a staging table and we created the index on this one now how we will select the data so we can write the query select a dot star from our email table which will be a inner join the second table which will be the staging table b on a dot id equal to b dot id where b dot part equal to one so this one value will be dynamic so in the first execution it will select the first 200 records from the first table and then in second execution it will select another 200 records okay so if you see here the id starts from now 201 and now for the part 3 it should start from like 401 okay so on so every time a different data will be selected okay so we can use this particular query in the c sharp script now what we can do i can show you the script that i already written i can show you the code okay so this is my code and let me explain you the code uh, real quick so that at least you know like what is happening so we have created these two variables for the logging purpose so in case if our script will fail then it will create a uh, txt file inside this location d files logs location okay so you can give any path here and the uh, log files will be created in case of any package failure okay and now here the maximum loop counter is 5 i have hard coded the value 5 here right now but we can pass this value from the ssis variable as well and i can show you maybe in the ssis package like how we can do that okay so we have set the max loop counter to 5 because we have created the 5 entiles here 5 equal parts so that's why we are uh, setting the max loop counter to 5 and our source table is the email table so that's why i given the email and initially the i have declared a local variable sheet name okay and our destination file name will be this one d files customer okay you can give any name here uh, any name without the extension so we are checking if file exists then delete the file and then we are using the uh, connection string for the sql database in which the email table exists so our sql server instance name is this one you can provide your own sql server instance name and our database name is the work so that's why i have provided the database name there and we are using the windows authentication connection here now this particular connection string this is used for the for reading the data from the excel file or writing to the excel file okay and now we are using a for loop here so the loop will start from one and it will run until the value of the i will be less than max loop counter plus one okay so the loop will is run for five times so now we are setting the value of the sheet name the, she the value of the sheet name will be sheet one first time the value of the i will be one so for first sheet it will be sheet one then sheet two sheet three and so on so we are just creating the uh, sheet here opening the connection and now in this particular line we are just getting the uh, list of columns from the email table and then here we are just appending the uh, you know column names so that we can create the excel sheet and now uh, in this particular queries we are actually creating the excel sheet and here in this particular line we are actually selecting the data from the sql server table select a dot star from email a inner join temp email staging b on a dot id is equal to b dot id where b dot part equal to i i will be the dynamic okay so we have actually used this particular query inside the script task so in case if your table name is something else so you can provide the table name here okay and in case if you want to create your staging table with another name so you can provide your table name here okay that should be fine and in case if your column name will be different then accordingly you can modify this particular query now here we are just inserting the data to the excel file into different sheets so that's what we are doing here okay so i can show you right now that i don't have any uh, customer sheet at the d files location so right now i don't have any customer file here and now let me execute the uh, this particular code and it should create a customer file with five sheets in it okay and it should insert the data from the email table to it so the process ran fine and if i go to the d files location then you can see a customer.xlsx file here and i can open this particular excel file and it should contain the data in five different sheets 
so you can see that five sheets got created here sheet one sheet two sheet three sheet four and sheet five in the sheet one it contains the data for the id from one to 200 and then in the sheet two it should contain the data from 201 to 400 okay so you can see that the data got divided accordingly and it exported the data correctly okay so now you know we can use this particular code whatever code is here we can use it inside the ssis package and we can make a uh, few things dynamic like uh, the entire thing as i told that you can just pass the value and the package should create the sheets dynamically so let me create an ssis package here so i can open the uh, visual studio 2019 create new project integration services project i can provide the project name and then i can select the location and create all right so the ssis package got created here now i can define a ssis variable and i can call it as max counter the data type will be int so that's fine okay and now what i can do uh, i can just drag and drop the execute sql task into the control flow window so that i can execute some sql queries so i can call it like uh, prepare staging table and then I can configure the execute SQL task here. Now from the connection, I need to create a new connection here to the SQL Server 2019 instance into the work database. So I can actually copy the SQL Server instance name from here, from this particular code. I can copy it and paste it here. And then from the databases, I can select the work database. Click OK, OK. Now inside the SQL statement, I can actually uh, you know paste this particular code to create the uh, tables and then I can click OK OK now what I can do uh, to get the max ID the max part number I can use another task and I can call it like get max part from staging OK staging table so that's fine so I can edit it and from the connection I can select the connection and in the SQL statement I can write a SQL query here uh, like select max part from a uh, temp email staging okay so it should return the value 5 so I can select this query and I can paste it here click ok from result set I can select single row because it will return a single row now in the result set name I will assign the value 0 and the variable name is max counter so I can click ok now i can just drag and drop the script task into the control flow window and i can connect the get max part from staging with the script task and i will call this particular script task as export data to excel okay and then i can configure this particular script task from the read only variable i will select the uh, max counter variable okay and i will actually copy this particular max counter variable value and I will click on edit script so that the script editor window can be open for us. Now I can paste the value of the variable here. Okay. And now I can copy the code from the C sharp console app. Uh, whatever code inside the main method. Okay. So I can copy from here. And uh, I can copy till the beginning. And I can paste the code inside the main method. Okay. And now uh, there is an extra method that I also can copy and I can paste it before the main method so that should be fine now it is missing some namespaces so I can hover my mouse on it show potential fixes using system.data.oledb okay one more namespace missing using system.data.sql client so this is fine one more namespace missing system.io okay so I can add this one as well so I think we are good now so all the errors are gone so that's nice now what we need to do we need to pass this value dynamically you know this, this 5 value so how we can do that uh, we have the uh, variable here so I can just type dts dot variables and the variable name dot value and then I can convert this value into the integer so I can use convert dot to int 32 okay and that should be fine yeah so this particular query is dynamic now 
okay so I can close this one and I can click on okay so this part is dynamic now now the only hard code part is this one that we are passing this value 5 here okay this is hard coded so we can also make it dynamic by uh, creating in a variable here like I can call the variable as uh, max part okay and we can uh, give the value here so right now it is value 5 so suppose if you want to change this value and maybe you want to give some another value like 4 for example here so it will divide the data into 4 parts and 4 excel sheets should be created so for that thing what you can do uh, you can copy the code from here and I can paste it inside the expression and in the SQL statement source I can actually put a double quote and paste the quote and the double quote here okay and now instead of this 5 value I can put double quote plus plus double quote and I can use the variable here max part variable here and because max part is type of integer so we can convert it to a string because we are using it inside the expression and inside a SQL query so we can give the max length as 12 so this is fine now the value is coming from the SSIS variable max part so I can click ok 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 there is one important thing that uh, sometimes the excel can be left unclosed ok or something so before starting the process we can actually close any excel process if, if it is opened so we can add this portion of code here ok so there is one more thing that we can do is that uh, we can add this portion of code at the end of the code as well okay so after closing the SQL connection we can put this code and because the same variable already exist in the same so we can just remove the declaration part okay and now it should be fine so now I can close this one click ok and currently if you see the max part is set to 4 so if I execute the SSIS package then it should create the 4 excel sheets and the data should be divided equally to 4 sheets so you can see the customer.xlsx file from here and if you open the file then the data should be divided to 4 sheets so in the first sheet it contains 250 records and then 250 250 into 4 it will be 1000 ok so now you can dynamically change the value of the max part so suppose if you change to 5 then uh, 5 sheets should be created and each sheet should contain around 200 records so the process ran fine and you can open the excel sheet again the customer.xlsx and now you can see the 5 sheets so the first sheet it contains 200 records and the id starts from 1 for sheet 1 and for sheet 2 the id starts from 201 ok and for the last sheet it starts from the 801 so this is what we wanted from the SSIS package that the data should be divided into equal sheets in the excel file yeah so I think that's it for today's video and I will share the script used here in the SSIS package like the yeah I will share this particular SQL query like whatever I used here and maybe this max query and of course the actual code the C sharp code I will share so that you can also test it in your environment as well yeah, so I think that's it for today's video Thank you guys for watching the video and if you like the video then please click the like button, do subscribe to our channel, press the bell icon, click on all so that you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much.